I'm Caitlin Matson, and this is The Green Room. Maestro Yaniv Segal from the Salinas Symphony joins me to talk all about the Nutcracker. It is their annual tradition in partnership with Ballet Salina to present the Nutcracker to the community. Hello, Yaniv. Hi, Caitlin. Nice to see you. It's good to see you as well. Uh, the Nutcracker is a staple of the season. It's a huge draw. It's so often, you know, you put on a production of the Nutcracker, you're going to see sold out seats. You're going to you're going to have a, a huge crowd. And uh, it's kind of just the perfect way to encapsulate the holiday spirit. And it can be very special when you have a live symphony orchestra playing in the pit, which Salina does. Absolutely. I think that makes a huge difference for ballet. Uh, and for dance, when you can have that collaboration and that energy that comes with a live orchestra, we do it in the steeple theater where we do our normal concerts, but we have a little pit uh, that's in, in the front of the, you know, kind of the front of the stage. Uh, unfortunately, we can't fit, you know, the 65 or 75% per person orchestra that Tchaikovsky wrote the, the score for, but uh, we do a reduction of it with, with smaller forces with all the parts covered and it sounds awesome even in that format it gives a nice little intimate chamber kind of feel uh, while playing the same themes and the same tunes and the same harmonies that everybody recognizes uh salina symphony in partnership with ballet salina uh they do the nutcracker is it do you alternate years yeah, yeah we're, we're we're doing it now every other year uh and then the last year we did the kind of annual christmas festival that the that the orchestra does with lots of other community partners and then uh, we decided to do this every other year, kind of after our last run two years ago, which was my first season with the orchestra. And in fact, both performances completely sold out. And we said, well, this is, this is exciting. This is fun. It's clearly something that the community wants. And it's really, as you mentioned, a great way to kick off the beginning of the holiday season, because after you hear the music, after you see the dancing, uh, you can't help but be in the holiday spirit. And it's wonderful for the dancers in the area. There are a lot of, uh, there are a couple of different schools of dance in Salina and all of those students get to take part and how wonderful that they don't have to travel. You know, they're not traveling to, to Wichita. They don't have to, you know, haul themselves five hours to Kansas city or something, you know, to take part in a production of the Nutcracker. They can, they can do it right there in Salina. Yeah. And I mean, I think there's over 80 local dancers involved and they've been rehearsing for weeks already and weeks and weeks to get all of the stuff down. You know, you've got, it, it's the perfect kind of uh, number for kids of all ages because you've got some little tots which are always entertaining to watch what they do. <laughs> they're darling. Stage, and you wonder which way they're gonna go and yes. it's super cute. And then you've got the older <laughs> students who've been dancing for, for more years, have more experience. Uh, you also have students, by doing this every two years, you have people who have danced it before and have since then learned more and gained more experience so they can come back and do more demanding roles. So uh, this, this kind of helps us, this tradition uh, helps us to develop that talent. And then for the principals, uh, it's common for regional um, productions like ours to hire professionals to come in to do the, the Sugar Plum Fairy and the Prince. Uh, and so we do have professionals coming in for that as well. That's so great. We're going to listen to just a little bit of the Nutcracker and come back and talk more. The performances are Saturday and Sunday, next Saturday and Sunday, uh, Saturday, December the 14th at seven o'clock. And then there is a performance Sunday, December 15th at four o'clock in the Stiefel Theater. Um, you can find out more information and be directed to where to get tickets if you go to salinasymphony.org or head to the Stiefel website, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Yep, both will work. All right, we're going to listen to the pas de deux from Act One of the Nutcracker, or maybe it's Act Two. Let Act me check. Two. Is it? Yes. Uh, yes, it is. From Act Two of Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker. Uh, and uh, we'll be back to talk more with Maestro Segal. Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker, just scrumptious music. And uh, for so many people, it isn't the holiday. It isn't the Christmas holiday without going to see a production of the Nutcracker or at least listening to the music at least five times through. Huh. I, you know, everybody's sharing their Spotify wrapped, like end of the year playlists wrapped. Um, and I look to see what album I listened to more than any other album in 2024. And it was the Nutcracker. Oh, yeah. I'm so boring. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I want 
that's so that's good. I mean, that's just a testament. It's it, it's not just that the story is great and the choreography is great, but this is one of those pieces that the music. I mean, he he wrote so many hits in one ballet. Absolute bangers. It's crazy. Yeah. But so you know the. the we in orchestra worlds we also perform the music as a symphonic suite sometimes you might get some of the pieces on a holiday concert or a, a kids concert or something but when we get to doing the whole score with dancers that's that's quite a different feel and a quite a different responsibility from me and from the orchestra because obviously we're trying to do each piece uh, service and and do its do it, it to its best but our tempos and where we give and take are governed by how the dancers are moving on stage. And uh, it took me a couple of performances. Uh, the first time I did this, maybe, uh, gosh, before the pandemic, um, to really realize, OK, that I can take care of this, but my attention has to be up on the stage. And I mm -hmm. have to see how comfortable they are with their turns, with their steps. You can't, uh, it, it's not like accompanying opera where you have the breath and some things could be extended in different ways uh you know with leaps there what goes up must come down and there's going to be a timing to that and as uh, you know the pas de deux that you just played that's a perfect example you know the, e each pair of principles will do that dance differently and tchaikovsky was really smart in the way that he wrote it in there's a lot of the piece that have that has a rhythmic underpinning, but the pas de deux is really flexible. And so for that piece, my eyes are are glued to the dancers, and I'm looking for any cues or signal as to are they going to are they going to move? Are they going to just stretch something? And and that's that's a number where we can have that fluidity, and that's really why it's great to do it with a live orchestra because every time the yeah. dancers are going to do it, they might feel a little bit different or something might inspire them uh, what happened, what they heard, what their partner did. Uh, so I, I really love the fact that we're doing it with a live orchestra. Yes, and exciting for the dancers themselves who maybe up until now have only performed with recorded music. Um, they haven't had the luxury of, of being able yeah. to dance with a maestro holding a baton who can be attentive to where their bodies are at on any given day. Right. And and they've been listening to a recording being played from a speaker, which means that all of the orchestra has been balanced. Right. You're getting the yeah. you're getting the complete picture. But now if you're standing on the side next of the stage waiting for a cue and you're standing next to the timpani and the timpani is playing, you might not actually hear the thing that you're used to hearing. Uh, so it's, it's also a different type of listening from the stage. Uh, because the sound is, you know, is localized. The Nutcracker with the Salina Symphony and Ballet Salina next Saturday, December the 14th at 7 o'clock, and then again Sunday, December the 15th at 4 o'clock. Uh, this is in the Stiefel Theater. Seating is limited. I imagine you, you're you really encouraging people to get tickets now. If you wait, it will it, probably sell out. Especially if you want to sit together. By the time we came to the, a couple of days before the concert, there were not there were only single tickets left. So mm. it depends if you want to sit next to your, your family or not. But but if you do want to sit next to your family... I mean, it might work in your favor, it. depending yeah. on your exactly. family so, dynamics. But so Go ahead and, and book those early. <laughs> yes, but it's probably best to get tickets in advance for any yeah. Nutcracker performance. You can go to salinasymphony.org. You could visit the Stiefel uh, Theater uh, website as well. You'll be directed on on how to get tickets, where to get those tickets. Uh, really quickly, the other schools of dance that are par participating, uh, is it Iron Street Dance is, yeah. is one of them? And what's the other one? Uh, to the Tamar House School of, of Ballet. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. so great. Now, when it comes to all the details, costumes, I mean, my goodness, there are so many so many different characters in the Nutcracker. You think about costuming. Now, of course, you did it a couple years ago, so I'm sure there are costumes from, you know, uh, two years ago being reused. But you think about the number of volunteers. There's a lot of people. It's a small backstage. We uh, we will utilize every single square inch of it. And of course, yes, there are costumes, but some kids 
might not fit in their costumes anymore or you know the different size kid is doing the, the role that somebody did the year before mm -hmm. so uh, all those things have to be adjusted in advance uh there uh there is there are props uh, there's going to be lighting and projections and all those things so yes it is it is a massive uh undertaking that will come across flawlessly and beautifully Nobody will even know. I mean, this is the technical side of the theater arts. The yeah. techies. Yeah. They're the ones who make things happen. Hopefully and... you don't know that the overture is one of the hardest pieces for orchestras to play. Is it? Is it really, though? It, oh, it, my, it I is. see. I hadn't heard that. You don't, because you hear it. I mean, it's so delicate and precise, and it feels like, you know, it, it is previewing it right. basically like a little ballet tapping around, right? Um, yeah. But... Uh, for the it, for the violins, it is awkward, mm. and because it's delicate, there's nowhere to hide. You know, when there when there's a big wash of sound, if you're a little bit off, it, mm. it, 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 it works itself out in the wash. But when you're playing something like this, uh, it, it's actually a really gnarly way to start the piece every time. Well, the secret's out now. Yeah. <laughs> now everybody's going to be listening. I, I didn't know until the first time I played it and I and I was in the pit. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you feel like, you know, one of those dreams where you're standing in front of an auditorium with, with in your pants, you forgot your pants or whatever. Right? Yeah, that's what yeah. it feels like, because you, you, it's nothing. You, you can hear every single note. Huh. I wouldn't have known that. Uh, thank you for that tidbit of information. All right, the Salina Symphony Nutcracker in partnership with Ballet Salina next weekend. Go to salinasymphony.org for further information and information on tickets. Thank you, Yanni, for being here and have a wonderful holiday season and an excellent performance next weekend. Thank you, you too.